He said, to the extent I desire to move through you, you must allow me to cut on you. The Leader's Cut. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to The Leader's Cut. We're doing a bit of a role swap. Uh, I'm Brent, and of course, this is Preston. Uh, so for the next, call it 60 minutes, I get to take over. <laughs> um, so we're getting to talk about uh, a topic that has become uh, super important to me, but also it's one where I think a lot of young leaders, Preston, struggle with in a major way, and it's the topic of comparison. So here's how I'm going to tee us off. I'm actually going to tee us off with one of you and I's first conversations with our wives at Chipotle. Uh, and then I'm a, we'll, we'll go from there. So just so you all know, uh, when Preston and I sit down, and, and let me do this, let me pray, because we can't have a cup without prayer, and then I'll tell you a really crazy story. Hey, Holy Spirit, would you just pull up a seat mm-hmm. here with us now? And I pray that there would be oil on this pod that would help young men and women realize that there is no reason on earth for them to compare themselves to anybody else. And I pray at the end of this pod that they would have the confidence to run their mm-hmm. race. We thank you, we bless you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So you and I, have, we're developing a relationship. Uh, the four of us, meaning our wives, were all out to eat. We were tro- supposed to go to some restaurant that took too long, so we ended up just going to Chipotle. Um, and as we're in the restaurant, like an idiot, I sit there and I make this comment, and we're talking about me senior pastoring. I said, "Dude, I just, man, I just feel like I'm getting old." Like he's like, "What are you talking about?" Like I'm just, I'm late, man. Like I'm, I'm 36, and I'm watching this guy, and I'm watching that guy, and I'm watching this guy, and I won't say their names, but all these guys. Who, if I said their names, mm-hmm. everybody, everybody knows them. Everybody knows them. Yeah, yeah. And some of them are either call it a year or two younger than me, or we're right. no farther off five years They're apart. They're your peers. They're my peers, north or south, five years, right? And the PG version of what you said to me at the table in front of my wife, you set up and you looked at me and said, You're an idiot. And if you struggle with comparison this bad, you have no business being a senior <laughs> pastor. That was the <laughs> first time he ever met my wife. So here it is. Let me tell you what happened that night. And then I want to ask you about how you've navigated comparison. So my wife and I get home and I'm just, I'm shook. Uh, Cause I, and I, here's literally what I'm saying. I was okay, well maybe I need to go sit down with a counselor. Like I'm saying all these things out loud, processing how to get over this comparison. I can't go to bed. Um, it's past 12, almost one o'clock in the morning. I go downstairs. I say a very short prayer, which was simply this, Lord, I'm struggling with comparison and I need you to help me. I go upstairs. I have a prophetic dream and it's not too many times where I will say out loud, it's a prophetic dream, but this one was, and here's what happens in the dream. For those of you who don't know, I'm from Michigan. So I'm in Michigan in this dream. And I'm trying to get back home to my family. So I asked my mom, who's in the dream, hey, Ma, can you take me to the airport? She says, son, I could take you to the airport, but you're not, your flight doesn't leave for another six hours. I said, cool, I'll, I'll have dad take me. So I wait the time. And then I get in this car. And this father figure gets in the front seat. I'm in the back. He's in the front. It wasn't my actual dad, but I knew it was a father figure. So I said, hey, thanks for taking me to the airport. He says, no problem. He's driving me to the airport. But here's the problem. He's driving stupid slow <laughs> and i'm in the back seat and i'm getting antsy <laughs> so i tell this father figure i say hey i don't i don't want to miss my flight is there any way you could speed up and here's what the father figure says to me he says just chill it'll be all right i said all right but i bet not miss this flight so i'm sitting in the back seat i'm playing on my phone next thing you know i get a notification on my phone that i missed my flight Now, in this dream, I get raging angry. I could feel it all over my body. And I start yelling at this father figure. I said, how come you didn't drive faster? How come you got, I got to miss this flight. Now I got to get new flight. And then he says again, just chill. It'd be all right. And then the wildest thing happens. Out of nowhere, my son pops into the dream. 
and my son is riding his bicycle and this father figure is screaming out the window, have fun, LB, ride your back. They're, they're having a great time. And I'm in the back getting more upset. How are y'all having fun? This is going to cost me all kind of money. Like, I missed this flight. Da, 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 da. And for the final time, father figure looks at me and again and he says, just chill. It'll be all right. And I wake up from the dream. And the irony was, is my wife and I both woke up at the same time. And she knew something was wrong with me. Mm. And she said, and it's, just, it's like, what, it's okay, last night, what's that, that? I said, no, 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 it's not that. I just had this dream and I'm trying to figure out what it means. She said, well, tell me the dream. So I tell her the dream and she starts laughing at me, Preston. I said, why are you laughing at me? She says, because God's laughing at you, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> literally that was her literal response because guys i said well whatever do you mean please explain she said remember three years ago when you got kicked out of seminary and you were driving trucks and you failed with the whole church planting thing and nobody could tell you anything and you were just popping off and snapping and the whole time i was just trying to tell you just chill mm. it'd be okay I think the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you the same thing now. Mm. You're not going to get to where you want to be when you want to get there. You're going to get there when he wants you there. Just chill. It'd be okay. Now, since then, I've gotten a further revelation about that dream, and I'm going to bury it. But let me ask you, how have you, knowing that you come from Gateway Church, mm -hmm which one of the largest churches in America. Mm -hmm. And your pastor in your church, by all account, is amazing. Great church, right? But it's not 40,000. Not 40,000. 40, right. It's not even 4,000. Right. How have you navigated not falling into the trap of comparison? Yeah, it's great. I, I love this conversation. And I love where you took it so fast. <laughs> where you, I love how you're just... This is one of the things I love about Brent yep. that he, he is. And, and this is, I think, the way God wants us to run. He, he's not trying to make himself look yep. like some amazing thing. We're all a work in progress. Yep. We talk about that all the time. Yep. Uh, and we're not trying to make ourselves look better. We're trying to help people. We're trying to obey God and help people while we do it. Yep. So I love this conversation where you've already taken it. Um, because typically for me, if the Holy Spirit has to give me a dream in the middle of the night, yep. uh, you know, I've grown up with Robert when he talks about his story of, of being baptized uh, in the Holy Spirit, it was in the middle of the night. It was yep. in a dream, yep. you know, yep. where that really started because, and, and he asked the Lord, he's like, why, why not in the middle of the day? Yep. And the Lord kind of sarcastically said back, uh, because you're too stubborn. <laughs> for me to do it in the middle of the day i had to make you, you i had to knock you out yep. to be able to do this yep uh so i think it's always important when god gives us a dream yep he's he's sending a strong message, message. yep um so i love it uh i would say uh, i used to struggle with comparison a lot so going all the way back to high school my oldest cousin i'm the second oldest cousin on my my dad's side um my oldest cousin was a superstar basketball player. Yep. Superstar. Yep. Uh, and so I learned, and I was on that team. Yep. Uh, my uncle, his father, was the coach of the team. We were a salty team. Uh, he was the number two player in the state of Texas behind Kenyon Martin back then. He was a dude. He was yep. a dog. Yep. And without realizing it, I was learning. The Lord was teaching me how not to compare mm. starting then. Like that in my journey. Yeah. That's really where it started. Um, you know, he went after the the national record for most threes in a high school game. Yep. He was just a dog, six six, nearly six seven. Yep. You know, hundred and fifty pounds, dripping wet. I mean, he was yep. skinny as a rail, dirt like. Yep. Uh, but he was incredible. Yep. And I didn't have his game. Mm. And I was the year behind him. And so I I learned. I, it, and because it was my cousin, I never had a problem with my cousin. Right. Because that's family. Right. I'm rooting for my family. Right. But I didn't understand the divine setup it was when I would run with Tim and I would bring him in to preach at, at seven yep. and everybody would go bananas. Right. Well, I'd already, I'd already learned the lesson. You right. don't root against family. Yep. Um, so it really started then. But then I will also say, once I got to Gateway and um, 
even when I was a, a youth pastor, yep. I could have really battled comparison with other guys who were yep. much better youth pastors than me. Yep. But it wasn't really something I struggled with. Yep. Um, struggled with a lot of other things. Yep. But comparison wasn't one of them. And I think it's because uh, I had Robert and my personal relationship with the Lord. Mm. So I had a great spiritual dad who never once yep. in seven years as a youth pastor, he never asked me how many kids I was running. Mm. Now you, you know, I know that's an anomaly. It is because it, it, it's, it wasn't that he wasn't holding me accountable. Yep. There was just a work God was doing yep. and I was in a process and I was behind a lot of other people. Yep. And he understood that. Yep. And made room for it. Yep. So what did that create in me? A sense of safety. Yep. I don't have to strive. Yep. I don't have to, you know, do these huge things to to win his affection. Yep. Uh so I had a good spiritual dad. And then when you go into the secret place, yep. And you just feel like he's smiling when he looks in your direction. Yep. Even when you're striking out. Yep. It's really hard to pay attention to other people in the batter's box. Yeah. When you're too captivated by your daddy in the stands yep. going, way to go. Yep. But I struck out. It's okay. Way to try. Like yep. I, I it, it's just, I'm, one of the things I'm most grateful for, it's as though the Lord created a bubble for me. Yep. That I just, I, I was aware a lot of people were comparing me. Yep but I just wasn't comparing myself to others. Yep. Uh, and part of that was the Lord had me off social media. I think the easiest way to compare yep. is just spend too much time on social media. Because mm. right now you could pull up a hundred yep. of your peers yep. in this line of work yep. and see what they're doing. Yep. And if my heart's not in a pure place, that can be really destructive and dangerous. Yep. So I think it's, uh, you know, and I know not everyone may have a, a great spiritual dad. So we need to talk about yep. some of the, the practical scriptural things. Yep. What can I do yep. in order not to struggle with comparison? Yep. Because they're not just your peers. The guys yep. you could mention are your brothers. Yep. This is a family. Yep. And so we, we really, I'm, I mean, I, I talk about this semi-consistently because it ticks me off. I, yep. I, if, if you're Steph Curry. Yep. And I'm Clay. Yep. Why would I ever yep. be bothered? Yep. If you put up 65 points. Yep. Let, let's let's be practical. Yep. What happens if, as you teach here, what happens if five times as many people watch your sermons as watch mine? Right. What happens? How do I handle that? Well, here's how I look at it. Yep. If you're Steph and I'm Clay. Yep. What's my goal? Right. I'm trying to win that chip. So. Yep. When Steph puts up 65, we all win. Bro, I'm sitting on the bench in the fourth quarter, not even yep. having to play. Go yep. get it. Yep. Get it, son. Get yep. it. Yep. So I, I, it's because we're brothers. Yep. But it's also because this is war. Yep. So yep. there's a lot to talk about. Yep. As it relates to practically fashioning a life that is absent of comparison. Yep. Now, as we talk about comparison, I want to take a moment and I want you to help out the fathers who are shepherding the sons, mm. right? That's great. To help them get why you don't mention, and Robert never asked, how many are you running? Because that will help the son. I'm going to let you take it from here. You're, you're on it. Yeah. You're on it. You yeah. know you're on it. Yeah. I, one of the worst things a spiritual father or mother can do, in my opinion, is compare their children. Yep. You know? Don't bring up the siblings. Yep. I, I will say this. While I didn't struggle with comparison, yep. I did because Robert's my hero and, yep. and my mentor. Yep. I did value and still do his yep. perspective yep. and weigh it very heavily. If he would have ever said something like yep. two years into being here and only yep. having a couple hundred, yep. you know, he would have ever said, Press, have you seen so-and-so doing their thing out there? Yep. He, he's been, he started a month after you. He's got 2,000 people. Yep. I will admit. Yep. If, if my hero would have said something, it, it would hurt. have devastated me. Yep. It, it literally would have devastated me. Yep. So as a, a, a spiritual dad, spiritual mom, 
Don't ever compare your kids. And also, if you know they're in God's process, affirm and encourage that they are in the center of God's will for their life. And, and to the extent that you even normalize that they might be a little behind. Yep. I remember one day Robert saying to me, we were just driving in the truck, just the two of us. And I just started and he goes, you know, I'm never going to understand yep. why it seems like we have to have such a difficult path in the mm -hmm. beginning. He goes, Preston, I, I'm never going to have the anointing. And he named a huge church that plants was at the time planting churches that started on day one with thousands of people. He goes, that's never going to be our path. Yep. What was he doing? Yep. He was normalizing yep. what it's like to be in a field of anonymity Yep. when people outside expect way more. Yep. So he created a safe place for me to be seen, but also loved and appreciated yep. up apart from yep. my production. Yep. And that's why I think it's important that when we get together with those God asks us to mentor, we, we don't start off the conversation with metrics. Nope. You know, how, how's this going? How's this going? Because here's the reality. You, you talked about this a couple of weeks ago when you were doing young adults at Cornerstone. It, it was not producing the results. Nope. that you were expecting and possibly what others were expecting. Yep. Yeah. Just like with the truck, God has and had you in a process yep. where he was doing something. Yep. And so I, I think uh, we have to be very careful at, if, if we're operating in a spiritual father, spiritual mother type of um, situation, relationship, we have to remember the weight of our words. Mm, and that's good. If you compare me, yep. I'll compare me. That's good. And one of the reasons yep. I think I didn't have as hard a time with comparison is because my spiritual dad never compared me to anyone. Mm. No one. That's crazy. No one. He, he, he helped me find me. That's good. So I, I definitely think... Uh, many mistakes have been made bringing up metrics yep. uh, before yep. the man or yep. woman. So to add to that, now I'm going to take the son's perspective. So the son's perspective is this, a son who struggled with comparison in a very unhealthy way. Here's what I've learned. You kill comparison by establishing a foundation of security. But what's the foundation of security? It's I'm secure and who God's called me to be mm -hmm. and what he's asked me to do. So you and I were having a conversation this week, uh, making a comparison between a healthy one between the army and the crowd. Mm -hmm. And here's what I gathered from that. Um, for me now, the goal is not to build a crowd because the crowd only takes, but the army is willing to lay Fine. their life down. Mm -hmm. The army is always going to be smaller than the crowd. Ask it in. Right. However, the army will always leave a legacy and the crowd will be forgotten. Right. And crowds aren't inherently bad. Right. Right. You know, but uh, I agree with you. I, I think we have to know who God made us to be. Yep. So the way I've kind of always seen comparison, like people will ask me, you know, how do you run with somebody like Tim? He's so different than you. Yep. And he's, this is the way I, they're basically saying he's such a better preacher than you are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and I don't disagree. I, yeah. lo I love, he's, he's always been one of my favorites to listen to. Yeah. Um, but I've never struggled with, well, I'm not him. Yep. You know, not as many people watch, but none of that. Here's yep. why. Because I'm like the elephant. Yep looking at Timmy, the airplane. Yep. And what sense would it make if the elephant looked at the airplane and said, wow, you look like you're a really good elephant. No, he's an airplane. Yep. How, how can I compare yep. this elephant yep. to that airplane? Yep. Like people are going to jump on my back. Yep. People are going to, going to fly with him. They're yep. going to ride with me. Yep. Like, I'm an elephant. Yep. And, but you have to be clear. What am I? Who has God asked me to be? God has not asked him to be me. Yep. And he and I will talk about it. He can't do what I do and I can't do what he does. Yep. 
That's why we enjoy running together. Yep. Because when we do what we do together, we're yep. even better at what we do. Yep. But I'm not trying to do what he's doing. I'm not yep. trying to build the basement. That's yep. not the grace of my life. Right. And he's not trying to do what I'm doing. That's good. So I, I think we, if you're not clear on who God is asking you to be, notice we're not just saying who you think you are. Mm, that's good. It's, it's not about, well, I know who I am. I, I don't care, actually. Yep. Yep. I need to know, do you know? who God has created and called you to be. Yep. That's what I need to know. Yep. Because if you're clear on that, yep. then it's going to be a lot easier to yep. never compl- compare elephants yep. and airplanes. Yep. If you, when you think about just, I'm, I'm 45, you're 36. Yep. Um, and we, we're in a line of work where uh, there is a lot of comparison. Yep. And you think about the the Outreach Magazine top 100 biggest <laughs> yep. churches and the top 100 fastest growing churches. Yep. And, um, I I remember. I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the pod before, but I remember when I got to meet privately with Craig Rochelle, and he said, "You can ask me anything you want." And I said, "Oh, I have a question. I've been dying to ask you." <laughs> and he said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." Why are you not in the Outreach Magazine top 100 list when you know you'd be number one? Number one. And I'll never forget what he said. Preston, those are my brothers. Mm. And this is not a competition. Mm. Bro, you talk about that. That was probably two years before I planted. Yeah. So 13 years ago. That moment marked me. Mm. When you see someone that is that successful, and I don't just mean earthly success, right. you don't get that without the oil of heaven yep. and the pleasure of God. Yep. When you see someone in that position yep. have that mentality, yep. then you look at someone like me and you go, yep. I, I, how dare I ever yep. compete with my brothers? Yep. This yep. is war. Yep. This is war. So if I'm comparing with you, that means I'm competing with you. 100%. And if we're competing, that means if I'm not doing well, yep. and if I'm walking, battling some insecurity, yep. I might be tempted to hit the pause button in my battle mm. just so I can try and top you. Unhealthy. Where God says, if you fire that bullet, Preston, I'm yep. telling you, you're going to lose this battle. Yep. Don't make it about Tim. Don't make it about Brent. Don't yep. make it about anybody else. Yep. Do what I'm asking you to do. Yep. So I think you're on it. If, if you don't know who God has called and created you to be, yep. you're always going to struggle with comparison. Always. And what I was trying to say to you that night was, you're not them. Yep. They can't do what you do. Yep. And you can't do what they do. Yep. Find the grace on your life. Yep. And don't pay attention to anybody. And learn. Yep. Learn from everybody. Yep. But again, if I'm competing with you, yep. I, I will never humble myself enough to learn from you. Yep. That's good. Bro, I just, Ooh, good. I just DM'd yeah. a 19 year old mm. who is, is stepping out into uh, influencing people online and yep. social media for the kingdom. Yep. I mean, the kid's only talking about kingdom issues and bringing kingdom encouragement. Yep. And the kid's been on one. I mean, yep. he, he's literally. Like in two weeks, he's picked up thousands of followers. Yep. And I sent him a DM and I said, hey, what are you learning right now as you have da 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 I'm asking a 19-year-old. Yep. Teach me what you're learning. Yep. Listen, if, if everything is a contest, yep. you're eliminating the teachers you can learn from. Yep. That's crazy. So let's pivot back then to uh, fathers again. Uh, And you told me, same thing you did with Robert, it's the same thing you're doing with Isaac, same thing you're doing with Mason. Uh, And you talked about even with you, most guys will go hire a youth pastor, young adult pastor, because they want to put more people in the seats the more students you have, 
more parents right. you get right because you're looking for the return on investment right right but for you that's not the return on investment yeah what would be the return on investment for you as a father well at whatever role god asked me to play in each of their lives yep that to the best of my ability i'd do that with a pure heart yep and one of the fastest ways to murky up pure waters is to compare and create competition. Yep. Uh, and so I, I'm one of the things I'm trying to do with all the guys, young men and women that God asked me to mentor. Uh, I'm trying to make it a safe place yep. to find God yep. and find themselves. Yep. It's good. And so some grow faster than others. Yep. I grew slower than many. Yep. Uh, but my mentality is I don't really care the rate at which you grow. Yep. As long as you're growing. Yep. Because you're going to go through different spurts, yep. different seasons of growth. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, if people ask me why, well, why do you treat the Isaacs and the Masons that way? My answer is really simple. Because Robert could have given up on me. Mm. He could have given up on me. He, he had plenty of reasons. Um, but he didn't. And so I think it's, it's really important to, uh, and Mason's a great example, our, our student ministry pastor here. Yep. He just changed the name of the ministry. You, yep. you got to give people room to run in their field. Now you got to put up the boundaries. Yep. And, and, you know, part of my job is to help make sure everything goes in the direction God's asking for things to go in yep. this house. Yep. Uh, but this is a kingdom thing, yep. not just a castle. Yep. I'm not trying to build a castle. Yep. Uh, and it, that's another thing that helps us not compete because Jesus builds the church. Yep. We build the kingdom. Yep. We are the church. We build the kingdom. Yep. He builds the church. So I think if, if we can try and keep the waters as pure as possible, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it helps us not drown in the flesh. Yep. That's good. So, now let me jump in one more time um, back to the dream because I said there's a, mm -hmm. something I got later that I was going to bury until we got somewhere towards the end of the middle of this pod. So as I thought more about the dream and the part where my son pops in and the father is having fun with the son, what I realized later is that I was so focused on the flight that I missed an opportunity with the father. I should have been doing what my son was doing, enjoying the presence of the father. But unfortunately, the goal wasn't the father. The goal was the destination. Talk about the importance as you're trying to kill comparison, of taking your eyes off of the destination and solely putting your eyes on the father. Yeah, I think because his relationship with each of us is so uniquely different yeah. and so personal. Yeah. That's another area where we can't compare. Yeah. You know, your walk with him is different than mine. Yep. The way he speaks to you is a little bit different than, than the way he speaks to me. Yep. It's so uniquely personal. Yep. That it just removes any comparison. Yep. For me. Yep. You have what you have, I have what I have, and, yep. I, and we're both trying to get more of him. Yep. Um, but I, one of the things I think it's important to remember is the only way I struggle with comparison is if I struggle with insecurity. Mm. And I, that I know that's hard to hear. Yep. <laughs> but the only way I struggle with comparison is if I struggle with insecurity. Yep. And if I am constantly checking everybody out, else yep. out and their stats to see what they're putting up. Yep. All that is is evidence that I'm embarrassed of the stats I'm putting up. Yep. And the way the Lord's helped me to just walk through that, I've never, so we said it about Robert, now I'll say it about the Lord. I honestly don't know how many hours I've logged with the Lord over the years since I was 12, 13. Yep. Uh, a, a decent amount. Yep. Never one time. Yep. Never one time. Yep. Has he asked me a question similar to how many you run? 
I go in and pray as, as not just the senior pastor, but the senior elder of the church. Yep. Wouldn't you think that the CEO, I'm not the CEO, he is. Wouldn't yep. you think that the CEO would from time to time go, hey, give me an update. Give me yep. a status report yep. on the numbers. And because he, it just doesn't seem like he talks. Like that. And think about it. He got angry with David when David counted. Yep. <laughs> David took the census. Yep. A little bit out of insecurity and pride. Yep. Those two typically go hand in hand. Yep. And he got in massive trouble for it. Yep. Why? Because I just don't think that's how God talks. Mm. It's why he chose Israel. Yeah. He went on record and said, I didn't choose you because you were the biggest and the baddest. Yeah. I chose you because you were the smallest. Mm. So if our God talks like that. Yep. And then he says, goes on record and says things like, despise not small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see yeah. the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Yeah. If that's how he talks, yep. why would I let my brain talk any differently? That's good. Bro, I'm 10 and a half years in. Yep. If you would have asked me, what size church do you think you'll be pastoring a decade in? I wouldn't have guessed this number. Yeah. Being honest. Yep. I d I'm not God. I don't understand everything. Yep. But I have learned during that time that it really isn't about a number. Yep. Obedience to God is not about a number. Yep. And it's not even about an outcome. Yep. It's about a process. That's good. An intimate process of walking with him. That's good. So, um, you know, I think it's just easier to live yeah. when you root for your brothers and sisters. That's awesome. It is. Yeah. I, I root for you. I don't, yeah. I don't stay up at night. Yeah. I've never one time thought. Yeah. What, and you even asked me at one point. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but you, you said, how do you, because you were asking about Tim. Yep. How do you handle being the senior pastor and a guy, I think it was right after his first message, which was like 100,000 views, mm -hmm. more than any, far larger than any sermon I've ever preached at yeah. Pillar. Yeah. And you're like, how do you handle as the senior pastor? A guy that isn't you yep. getting that much love, yep. that much more love than you. And my response was, this is war. Yep. And I want to win. Yep. And my best friend can bring some bullets to this party. Yep. And he did. And that's yep. why people responded the way that they did. Yep. And so kind of like John the Baptist with Jesus, I celebrate. Yeah. I yeah. celebrate. And if that means I must become lesser yep. so that for a moment, he can become greater by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yep. I'm down. Yep. That's I'm down. Cool. That's awesome. But I don't know that we'll ever get more of the Holy Spirit if we resent the fruit of the Spirit and its outcomes yep. from the people running around us. Yep. Our peers. Yep. So now let's destroy some of the lies of the enemy. Can a guy be late? As it relates to the call of God in their life? Yep. Heck no. Heck no. I think that's why in the dream, yep. there was a sense of it's, it's, it's not about when yep. you get on that plane. Yep. You're going to get on that plane. Yep. Relax. Yep. I don't think there is such a thing as late yep. unless it involves radical disobedience, yep. rebellion. Yep. Rebellion is radical disobedience. Mm. Um, I don't think a person can be late. Yep. I don't. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, and I want to be careful with this because it's not about numbers and things. It's just sometimes God puts his hand on certain things that you do. For 10 years, I wasn't on social media. Yep. Right? Yep. Church planner's hand guide would probably not say, yep. you know, it's a really smart idea for the senior pastor, the most vocal voice, to shut their mouth online. Right. And act like you don't even exist. Right. Like no church planning book is going to tell you that's wisdom. Right. But the Lord had said no. Right. It's not time for that, Preston. And so 10 years, that's where could I have amassed more followers during that time? Of course. Yep. But can it also be said that I can sit in anonymity for, for 10 years? Yep. And then when God says now, yep. He does what he's done the last seven months. Yep. He's the God. Yep. Who is outside of time. Yep. That means. There's no such thing as arriving yep. late yep. if you're walking with him. That's good. That's good. So no, yep. it definitely can't be late. 
And I think that's the way the enemy talks. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Yep. God never, if, if somebody ever hears, I'm, I'm, I'm late. Yep. I'm, I'm missing my moment. I'm missing my opportunity. Yep. That voice that you're hearing is not the voice of God. Yep. That's not how God talks. Yep. He speaks more. We're good. It's okay. But God, someone's rushing past me. They're, they're yep. winning the race. Preston, they're not in your race. Yep. I have them in a different race. Yep. They're not beating you. Yep. As long as you walk with him, yep. you can never be late. Yep. To anything. Good. So there's a young guy, young girl leading in ministry. They're comparing themselves. They feel like a failure. Here's the question Are they failing? Or is their season over? How do you discern the two? That's a great question <laughs> because that's part of what I told you when yep. you're like, yep. why? I yep. don't understand why young adults isn't yep. firing yep. the way it should. Yep. How, why is there a grace yep. to teach on the weekend? Yep. But I'm not seeing that same grace. Yep. And what did I say? I think it might be because yep. the Lord is saying, Brent, yep. that season has come to an end. Yep. And I have more oil for you yep. for other things, new things, and even some of the things you've been doing for a long time. Yep. But that season. Yep has come to an end. This is why I think we have to press into the Lord. Yep. Um, just because it might look like I'm failing doesn't mean my season is over. Yep. Because for some, it looks like they're failing at the starting line. Yep. But God's doing something. Yep. Oftentimes, this is just my perspective, oftentimes when God has us go through a season where it looks like we're failing, it's more about the work he's doing in me than mm. the work I'm doing with my hands. Ooh, that's good. Yep. Yet the enemy personalizes it. Yep. We're pressing the, the reason the church isn't doing as well as so-and-so is because of this. Yep. No, the reason the church is where it is is because I can't outrun God. Yep. He builds the church. Yep. I can't outrun him. Yep. I'm, I'm firing all the bullets I know to fire, but this is the pace at which he's moving. Yep. So what is success? You, you bring up the word failure. That inherently is a, a conversation about success. What yep. is success? obedience yep. at God's pace. Mm, that's good. It's not just obedience. Yeah. It's obedience at God's, God's pace. pace. Mm. So it may look like you're failing for a little while. Yep. But I will tell you the times that I, it looked like I was failing on the outside. Those are some of the seasons God was doing the most amazing work on the inside. Mm. And typically God prepares you for success yep. by helping you navigate yep. failure. Can you give us an example of one of those times where he was doing that amazing work, but you looked or felt like you were failing? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Week number six, there's seven people on the stage and six people in, in the room, yep. 850 seats. Yep. And I'm, I'm angry with the Lord. And it looked like I was failing. Yep. At that point, a month and a half in, yep. I hadn't learned the lessons I was about to learn, yep. including one of the biggest ones that he would teach me several minutes later. But I'm going, Lord, I'm failing, essentially. Yep. I could have just stayed in the move of God back in Dallas. Yep. And that's when the Lord said, Preston, it appears to me as though you're more focused on who isn't here mm. than you are with who is. Yep. And if you'd like, I'll leave. Well, he was he was do I, I wept for two more songs. My mm -hmm. wife didn't think I was going to be able to preach because I was weeping so hard. Yeah. Why? Because it when he said those words, yep. surgery yep. took place on my heart. Yep. And so on the outside, I mean, there ended up being 60, 70 people by the end of the service. But it didn't matter. Yep. Because work had been done in the deepest place of my heart. Yep. Where he was calibrating me. Yep. This is what success is. Yep. Am I in the room? Am, and am I pleased with what's going on? Yep. So every one of us has to get from the Lord. Yep. Lord, what does success look like? Yep. Yep. Well, and then even in addition to that, as you were talking, here's a thought that came to my mind. I think everybody around would have looked at Joseph and said, this dude is a failure. Moment in the pit, failure. Moment in Potiphar's house, 
failure. Moment in prison. Failure. But then in the end, he's second in command. Right? Um, and I know preachers have preached it over and over and over again, but the common thread between those moments that may seem simple, but we have to always hold on to, and we talked about it on the other pod, every single moment in, that, in Joseph's life, the scripture says it over and over again, and the Lord with Joseph, which means you can't fail if he's with you. So if I can't fail if he's with me, then why am I so busy comparing? Right. <laughs> I can't fail. Um, so, yeah. I think part of Joseph's mistake early on, personally, yeah. I think the reason he might have shared the dream with his brothers yep. was comparison. Mm. Whereas Mary... Mary's told she's going to be the mother, yep. the son of God. Yep. And she keeps it yep. hidden in her heart. Joseph gets told, your brothers are going to bow down. Yep. Like this, this is going to be monumental. You're yep. different than ever. What does he do? He immediately runs to his brothers and mouths off. Yep. I think it's because he then in that moment, in that season of his life, he struggled with comparison. Yep. Because when, when you're battling comparison and insecurity, you have to tell everybody everything. Yep. But you know you're doing better when you can be a little more like Mary and hide those things in your heart. Or even Elizabeth, who rejoiced over the fact mm. that Mary was car carrying, she was the mother of her Lord. Instead of going, well, why not me? How come I can't be the mother of the <laughs> Son of God? <laughs> right, right. Which goes back to your point of root for your brothers and sisters in Christ Bro, and stop comparing. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Because if you win, I win. 100%. We're on the same team. Yep. Every time you win, yep. we win. Yep. But if I need to be the star of the show, yep. then I'm going to be disappointed every time someone succeeds. So then how do young men and women or older men and women guard their hearts from being the star of the show. <laughs> Try being it for a little while. Mm. And you'll quickly realize you don't want it. Mm. I tell people all the time, the worst part about my job is being out in front of everyone. Yeah. Having said that, when I was an insecure 19 year old, I dreamt of being in a room where I was the only one talking. And it was, think how stupid that is as a preacher. Yeah. So what I was literally saying to the Lord is, I don't yeah. care if you're speaking as long as I get to. Yeah. This is how jacked I was. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we've, we've got to be able to wrestle some stuff in our hearts. Yep. And um, just get to that place where it doesn't, outcomes are on God, not on me. I can just give my all. Um, and the reality is, I, if I don't root for you, yep. I'm rooting against the Lord. Yep. And I take that very seriously. Yep. Why would I ever want to oppose God? Yep. The hand of God is on your life. Yep. And, and on your life. Why would I root against God doing something on the earth through one of the family members I and he love? Yep. yep. I just don't you know. I, I wonder if comparison isn't why, what, part of the reason why Lucifer fell. Mm. Bro. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm dead serious. Like we're given the number, a third. Yeah. Why is it important that we know the number? I just wonder if it's because his goal was the majority. If his stated goal wasn't a third, it was 51% or more. And the only way you talk numerically is yep. if you're comparing yep. to the other one with the number. Yep. I don't want to roll like him. Mm. I don't. I don't did, think about this. The woman at the well. Yep. What would it have been like if Jesus would have brought comparison into that conversation? Yep. Woman, what's your problem? Yep. 
your neighbor is one of the purest women of God yep. in your city. Yep. But you, though, yep. have had five. Right. And the one you're living with right now, you're not even married. Right. How come you can't be more like your neighbor? Right. You don't think? Crushed her. That would have. That would have crushed her. And this is why he doesn't talk that way. Yep. So if he doesn't compare his children, yep. then I better not. Yep. Fastest way to create division in a family is to get the siblings to compare, one to another. compare with one another. Mm. I want nothing to do with a house like that. Mm. Nothing. And I just don't think that God is, is talking numerically, comparing us all, comparing me to you, you to me. Yep. No, man. Yep. I'm an elephant. You're an airplane. Yep. I'm going to be an elephant to the best of my ability. You're going to be an airplane to the best of yours. Yep. And we're going to win in battle together. Yep. So as a young man, young woman is waiting um, on whatever they're waiting on, right? Uh, and if we can come out of ministry and go to practical to waiting to get married, waiting on the job, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. and they're fighting against this, this whole comparison battle, right? What does waiting well look like? Well, what I typically say, waiting well starts with obedience. Yeah. You can't wait well yeah. outside of obedience. Yeah. But it, I, I also think waiting well involves the cave. Mm. The fastest way, one of the fastest ways to kill comparison is to live in the cave. Yep. Because I can't see what everybody else is doing on the court when yep. I'm in a cave. Yep. There's no cell signal down in the depth of the cave. Yep. So I can't see, you know, when I was in high school, every, I think it was Wednesday and Saturday morning, I would wake up, grab the paper and see all of the stats, points, rebounds, assists. Yep. Me compared to my peers. Yep. When you're in the cave, you can't get the newspaper. Yep. All you can get is his signal down in the depth of the cave. Yep. And he's not talking to me about your numbers. Right. He's never once talked to me about your stats. Yep. Because he's a perfect daddy. Yep. So I think waiting well involves spending more time on, in the cave than on the court. Mm, that's good. Because you, you can't quantify my numbers in the cave. Yep. Now you'll see the fruit. Yep. But you can't, you can't compare it to anybody else. Yep. Cave is the cave, and it's our cave. It's me and him. It's not ours, me, you, and him. It's, it's our special place. It's good. His and mine. It's good. And it is a safe place. So I, I think if, if somebody is waiting, dig as deeply as you can in that cave. And I found the deeper you go into that cave, the less you compare with people on the surface. Mm. 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 So... I think what will help people, and we may have already said it, but I'm going to say it anyways. I think what will help people is giving them, giving them something else to focus on, mm -hmm. right? Because right now you're focused on the wrong thing. In my case, I'm, I'm focused on those five or six guys that I named right. and where I'm at in ministry. Uh, what would you tell a guy, instead of comparing yourself to them, here's what you need to focus on in this season? What would that be? Well, to, to try and be as specific as I can be and not just generalize. Yep. Um, even though each of us are in different situations. Yep. I would say one of the things um, that they need to do is forget about what everybody else is doing. Mm. Even if they're doing the same thing as you or you do the same thing as them. Yep. If God has you in a season of waiting, it's a season of preparation, which, me, which means I'm not yet ready. Yep. So first, I need to get clear on where I am yep. and where he wants me to be. Mm. Okay. You know how deep of a work that is? Very. <laughs> when I'm here, but he wants me to get here, and there's a ton of stuff that has to happen between the two yep. locations. Yep. Help me understand how I have the time when yep. he says, Preston, you're here, but I need you to get here. to here yep not climbing the ladder yep i, I need you to graduate graduate yep. graduate yep. help me understand how i have the time yep. to bring you and where you are into 
the in between of these two places where mm-hmm. I am and where he wants me. Yep. I don't have time for that. Yep. Cause I'm not going to answer for you. Yep. So if I'm not going to answer for you, why am I going to sit around yep. and think about what you're doing all the time? Yep. I'm going to answer for me. Yep. So if I'm in a season of waiting, there's somewhere he wants me to be that I am not yet yep. able to handle. Yep. So figure out where I am personally. Yep. Figure out where he wants me to be and then put together a plan. Yep. To become this man, this woman. Yep. Yep. That's good. To add to that, just like, and you and I talked about this the other day. Um, my specific prayer to the Lord was, is, hey, I know the areas that I need to work on, right? Lord, would you show me the areas that I need to work on that I can't see, right? right? So, and one of those areas that he, he, he told me I'm willing to share this was, um, well, actually it was both. It was maturity. The second one was confidence, mm. right? So we'll deal with the confidence one first. For me, whenever you come out of a season to where you feel like you failed at a thing, it crushes your, well, for me, it crushed my confidence. Mm. And it made me question whether or not I can do X, Y, and Z. I think now I'm in a place, because your favorite question that you like to ask in so many words is, where are you? Right. And we had a where are you conversation in your office. But now I'm in a place to where it's, um, bro, you got to let that ish go. Right. (laughs) Like, if you failed, great. What did you learn from it? Now let it go. Right. Because here's the thing He knew you before He formed you in your mother's womb, and He well equipped you to do the thing He's going to ask you to do. You're just in the developmental process of getting there, yeah. right? So get your confidence up. Don't have a lack of confidence that you can't do it. And then even on this, the maturity level, it takes a level of spiritual maturity to carry the mantle that he wants to give to you. Right. So as a result, here's the thing that you need to, fo- for me, what I need to focus on, all right, cool. How do I have mature conversations in a room full of elders? How do I have m- mature conversations with the CF- CFO? on the, the right. church side of things. Um, so those are the things that I'm learning now as I've come out of my season and unhealthiness of just comparison. It's this development of God, who do you want me to be? But show me the things right. that I need to work on that with my natural eye, I can't see. Right. Um, I don't know if you want to jump in. And, and when he gives you the answers to yep. those questions, there's such a plan requiring so much work to be able to walk all that out yep how does one have time to sit around and compare yep you don't yep because there's too much work to be done yep and but i'd also say about the failure from the past the only way a failure from my past can be a weight in my present is if i refuse to let go of it yep well Preston, how do you let go of a failure from the past well one of the biggest ways is learn everything you can from it and then drop it yep drop it i have there there was a a moment early on as a senior pastor where i made a mistake and i beat myself up over it big time Mm. and there was some financial recourse with it and it wasn't an inordinate sum of money but it it was enough where i was ticked at myself for messing up i should have known better da 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 and when the Lord said to Preston, if you learn everything I'm trying to teach you from this mistake, you are calling it a failure. You want to know what I call it? Education. Mm. That's good. So if even in failure, That's good. I learn what God's trying to teach me, yep. then actually there's yep. no such thing as failure. failure. Yep. Just a lesson. It was just an education. Yep. So I think when we get clear on that kind of stuff, yep. you just, this is not a contest. Yep. It's a race, but you're yep. in yours and I'm in mine. Yep. And there's safety in that. Which takes me back to this thought. Just chill. Chill. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, bro. Just, just. It is going to be okay. Chill. You're going to make more mistakes forcing it. Yep. Than you will ever make waiting for it. 
Yep. Obedience at his pace. Yes. But if you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, yep. you will always be guilty of outrunning God. Yep. Because if he wanted me to have it right now, I would. Yep. The only reason I don't have something he may want me to have is because I'm not yet ready to steward it. Yep. So we that's come back good. to, yep. then that's where I am. That's where he wants me to be. Yep. What's the plan I need to put in place yep. to become that man? Yep. And that yep. plan has nothing to do with you or anybody else. Yep. Yep. That's super good. Well, can you pray for him? I love it. I love this whole conversation. I, I, I love vulnerability. Yeah. I love when we can just uh, let the guard down. Yep. And because the Holy Spirit does some of his best work. Yep. When we just let our guard down. Yep. Um, and that comes with radical transparency. Yep. And not, um, I think it's important if we're going to kill comparison, we have to create a, a pure environment mm -hmm. where we esteem one another's gifts, but we also understand yep. the gifts we've personally been given. Yep. And it's a both and. I root for you, you root for me. Yep. And because we're not competing, we can handle one another's 100%. radical transparency. 100%. Instead of use it as a way to get a leg up yep. in the race. Yep. So thanks for being so real, bro. You're, 100%, you're, bro. You're a real one. 100%, Nine. dude. And to every dude out there who struggles with comparison, here's what I would say, man, find you a Paul. For every Timothy, find a Paul, who, not a mentor, a Paul, mm. who you can be vulnerable transparent with open up with mm. or your deepest darkest secrets with and they won't judge you. yeah um for me i know i've shared some things with you uh that i haven't shared with many but it's a safe place um and it it makes all the difference so i love it we'll yeah. have to talk about positivity next time you let's go on, on the phone <laughs> God, thank you so much for our time together. Yeah. I just love your kingdom. Yeah. And I love your people. I yeah. love your family. Yeah. I love those who are not yet your family, that yeah. you are radically chasing every moment of their lives. Yeah. Lord, this, it's just a dream come true yeah. that we would ever get to do anything with the God of the universe and that we've been able to sit here for the last hour of our lives with you, not just one another. Yeah. We don't take that lightly. Yeah. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would take any nugget that was from you during this last hour that might have resonated with my brothers and sisters, yeah. I pray that you would fan the flame, yeah. Yeah. That, that it would create a spark which yeah. creates a forest fire yeah. that only you could take credit for. God, thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for being the God who walks with us. Yeah who protects us, yeah. who gives us a safe space mm. to be a little slower than everybody else sometimes. Yeah. What matters isn't if we can keep up. Yep. What matters is if we'll stay in step with you. So I pray, Holy Spirit, yeah. over my brothers and sisters that you would grant them more of the oil of heaven to yeah. run at your pace and i pray the scales of comparison would fall off their eyes yeah and out of their phones yeah so as to never be revisited again yeah so that they can with pure hearts yeah. root for their siblings yeah god would you rip open the windows of heaven and overwhelm them yeah with your richest blessings yeah in every area of their lives yeah in jesus name amen 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 well, Love it. Thanks, buddy, for 100%, doing bro. this. Thanks always love me. hanging out with you. 100%. Always love talking and going there with you. And always love hanging out with you. We had an absolute blast. Can't wait to see you next week. I'll be praying for you. And listen, if there's something you would love for me and us to be praying along with you, put in the comments. Put in the comments. You're my sister. You're my brother. Come on, let's go. If I, I want to be praying or DM me if you need a little more space or privacy. I love praying specifically for you. So if you need prayer, shoot me a little something. I'll be praying with you, all right? I love you. I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>